he had not read his slip of paper. It was folded in an envelope in his left pocket. In his right pocket were several books of matches, and he was wearing a backpack. He pushed his way through the scrubby pine trees on the west border of the barrens. This isn't how it works, you know. The machine is playing word games. He hopped across a clear stream, feet sinking into the sandy bank on the other side, wetness seeping over the soles of his sneakers. Water was bad. He needed dry brush. The universe doesn't work by word games. You have to think with words to play word games. He kicked at a snake, daring it to bite, but it disappeared into the undergrowth. You can't just say what's going to happen ahead of time. That's not how physical law works. That's narrative. And when reality is twisted to fit narrative, that's not natural. That's someone making stories happen. A few strands of spiderweb brushed his cheek and eyelash, and he swatted at the air around his face. He was climbing higher. He spotted a cluster of dry-looking bushes in the fading light. and took one of the kerosene bottles from his backpack. We have tales about this. The oracle makes a prediction, and it comes true in an ironic way. Every legend has them. But that's how you tell the legends apart from reality. In reality, the magic doesn't work. He unscrewed the cap on the kerosene bottle and started splashing the liquid over the dead leaves. He continued until the bottle was empty and the brush was thoroughly soaked. There are paradoxes, too. Playing word games only frees you from them for so long. You're messing with things somehow, keeping people dying the right way no matter what we do. If we watch long enough, We'll see your hand move. I'm not stupid. You can't just change things like this. The breeze was strong and westerly, and there was plenty of brush downwind. He struck a match, stared for a moment, and then dropped it among the fuel-soaked leaves. Physics works by saying that if you set things up like so, this is what will happen. Curses say that no matter how you set things up, this is what will happen. And curses don't work. They never have. That's not how our universe goes. They're in all of our stories, but that's because we're people, and we can figure out a way to make them adapt to each new situation. It takes a mind to do that. The grove was ablaze. He turned from the heat and walked away. It takes a mind, he repeated as he went, and yet those people are all dead, just as their papers predicted. So, where does that leave us? There was no answer. He reached the car. It was a Chevy Nova with no glass in the back window. He had bought it for three hundred dollars cash. I never expected an answer. I never thought the priest or the rabbi or the monk knew any more than I did. I was at peace with an uncaring universe. So what the hell is this all about? For the first time, a chance at some answers? And you're playing games? He pulled out onto the freeway and settled the speedometer at 70. Any faster, and he might get pulled over. In any event, the car wouldn't go any faster. Are you even paying attention? Am I just talking to myself? Maybe you're on autopilot. Maybe you haven't noticed me yet. He drove silently for an hour, then got off at a random exit. You can't just announce that it's all been a game and then expect me to keep playing. I spend my life waiting for some fucking answers, and then you wave this in front of me. 
I'm not going to sit around and passively watch how it all plays out and laugh at your cleverness. I want to talk to you. I want to know who the hell you are. He passed an all-night Walmart parking lot, drove on for half a mile, and turned right onto a dirt road. He followed it for a bit, then turned off the road and maneuvered the car between the trees down into a small ravine where the wheels stuck in the mud. He turned off the car, took his backpack, and walked toward the Walmart. So, who are you, anyway? Are you what waits on the other side, with the papers guiding us to you? Or are you a petty, stupid animal like us, a level above, but just as lost, playing games? Do you know your own destiny, your own end? Does the same reaper who collects our souls wait somewhere for you? What does it say on your piece of paper? He reached the parking lot and walked down the rows of cars. He found an old Reliant K with a gold hood. Good, its owners probably wouldn't return for a while. He took a crowbar from his backpack, broke the window, opened the door, and climbed inside. He fumbled around with the wires under the steering wheel, hoping that there would be an obvious pair of wires labeled connect these to hot wire car. But in the end, he had to pry the ignition apart and turn the rotator switch to start the car. He pulled out onto the street and headed back toward the freeway, wind buffeting his face through the shattered window. Maybe someone had seen him at the Barrens, but they'd be looking for a Chevy Nova Keep changing cars. Can't get caught by a roadblock once they notice the pattern. Have to do this right. I'm not afraid anymore. But I'm angry. This isn't right. This isn't natural. We're being pushed around, and I want to know who you are. Who the hell are you? What am I doing out here? I have a mother and a father and brothers, and I'm on a highway in a stolen car hundreds of miles from home, and I could die anywhere, and it's all to play games with you, so you'd better fucking come out and talk to me. He felt a tightness in his chest and a sudden lump in his throat. He blinked away tears. I'm not crazy. There are hundreds of bodies buried with their little pieces of paper, and it's not natural, and I want to know who the fuck you are. The words hurt his own ears. He drove for another hour, a Google Maps printout in his lap, the location of the next fire marked with a red teardrop-shaped icon. In elementary school, he said, after a time. Kids would come up to you and ask the question, Are you P.T.? It was a trick question, of course. If you said yes, they called you a pregnant teenager. If you said no, they'd say you weren't potty trained. All you could do was reject the question. You could even, he added conversationally, punch the kid in the mouth when he asked. They'd probably see the pattern by morning. The local police would be alerted, waiting near the locations of the last few fires. He'd have to be careful. When the question doesn't make sense, you can reject it. But this is much worse. Here, there's only one way out, and you're standing there next to it, grinning. Well, fine. You win. I can't quit. I'm in your stupid game. He shifted in the seat and heard the envelope crinkle in his pocket. He stared up at the stars through the glass. But I'm not reading your paper until you give me some answers. 
Morning drew near. Spot fires burned across the Ohio Valley, forming a curious pattern. Perhaps someone out there would glance at the earth, would see the great question mark he had burned into its skin. Perhaps the mind behind the machine was deaf to his ramblings, but it had to notice the hundred-mile-tall message drawn in fire. It was the machine's move now. He sat on a flat stone in a Kentucky field, far from any roads. The police wouldn't find him here, not for a long time. He'd starve to death first. I don't know what you know, but I know I'm done searching half-heartedly for answers. I have your attention across whatever space and time separates us. Whatever is going to happen to me can happen here. I'm not moving to eat or drink. If that's the way you've decided it will happen, then I guess that's the way it will happen. But it's your decision, not mine. You can't pretend you're ignoring this. He lay back on the rock. So maybe I'll die here. Maybe this is how it ends, with my questions unanswered. The setting moon hung over the horizon. People claimed it bore a face, but he had never been able to see it. But if you have even a bit of honesty in you, the paper in my pocket doesn't say suicide. It says murder. There was no reply.